NVIDIA's 100% withdrawal from the Chinese market due to USA export controls. When the headline, NVIDIA fully exits the Chinese market, abruptly appeared in financial news in the late autumn of 2024, it sent shockwaves through the global semiconductor industry. The tech giant, which once commanded a 95% market share in China's AI chip sector, saw its market capitalization surprisingly soar to $4.6 trillion within three months, surpassing Microsoft to reclaim the title of the world's most valuable company, even after losing the largest consumer market globally. This frenzied performance in the capital market defies traditional business logic. China's annual AI chip procurement scale is a staggering $38 billion, according to Gartner data. How could such a massive market vacuum instead become a wealth catalyst for NVIDIA? What strategic game is hidden behind this seemingly absurd capital play? In an era of rapid AI technology advancement, the GPU has become the digital heart of the tech industry. If a standard CPU is a slow, single-threaded task-handling home stove, NVIDIA's GPU is a five-star hotel's central kitchen capable of managing hundreds of walks simultaneously for parallel computing. For example, training OpenAI's ChatGPT 4.0 requires complex calculations involving over 2 trillion data points, equivalent to 80 million traditional CPU computations per second. It was through the technical barrier of its CUDA architecture that NVIDIA firmly controlled over 90% of the world's AI computing market with 95% of Chinese AI startups and internet giants' data centers relying on its products. This sudden decision to abandon the Chinese market, which appears to be self-sabotage, in fact conceals deeper strategic considerations. Dramatic market reactions followed. According to the latest data from CounterPoint Research, Chinese GPU manufacturers experienced explosive growth in the six months following NVIDIA's announcement. Cambricon's Sapon 590 chip achieved a computing power breakthrough of 1,000 PFLOPs, and more Thread's MTTS80 chip quickly captured the market with an 80% price performance advantage. The overall market share of domestic GPUs surged from 15% in 2023 to 40%. More Thread's, founded by former NVIDIA Vice President Jianzhong Zhang, alone secured $2 billion in government and university orders in the fourth quarter of 2024. In contrast, the U.S. semiconductor industry suffered a ripple effect from the export controls on China, incurring $1 billion in direct losses from tariffs alone, while the cumulative market capitalization of the Philadelphia Semiconductor Index components evaporated by $130 billion. With Chinese enterprises achieving technological breakthroughs under policy support on one side, and the U.S. industry bleeding from sanctions that injure the enemy a thousand but harm oneself eight hundred. On the other, the script of this technological contest is overturning all expectations. This seemingly absurd. Lose-lose, win-win. Situation is, in fact, the product of a fierce clash between geopolitics, technological monopoly, and market dynamics. As we examine the history of the semiconductor industry, from the rise and fall of Japan's semiconductor sector to the EU's struggle for digital sovereignty, history has left countless precedents. Next, let us cut through the fog to dissect the butterfly effect of the US chip policy, decode the underlying logic of the NVIDIA market cap myth, and predict the ultimate trajectory of this technological contest. The US has personally shattered its own rice bowl, an operation even more baffling than its actions against Japan. In the 1980s, the U.S. forced Japan to sign the Plaza Accord to restrict semiconductor exports, only for Japan to pivot to technological upgrades, grabbing 90% of the global drum chip market and counterattacking U.S. companies. Now it's even more ridiculous. China accounts for 42.3% of the global semiconductor equipment market, and 40% of the revenue of the top three U.S. equipment manufacturers relies on China. Yet the U.S. insists on imposing controls. NVIDIA alone stands to lose $16 billion in H20 chip revenue, and the entire industry is losing over a billion a year. This is not suppressing a rival. It's clearly self-mutilation. The counter-effect of this short-sighted policy is gradually becoming evident. NVIDIA incurred a one-time $5.5 billion loss charge in the 2024 fiscal year due to the China chip export restrictions. Intel to cope with declining revenue, 
laid off 15,000 employees, and companies like AMD and Qualcomm are also facing inventory pileups and market shrinkage. Beneath the policy veneer of national security, U.S. domestic companies are being forced to bear enormous economic losses. This self-destructive approach not only fails to curb autonomous innovation in China's semiconductor industry but is actively weakening the global competitiveness of U.S. tech companies, becoming a veritable death knell. NVIDIA's market cap myth is entirely built on a robbing Peter to pay Paul strategy. Superficially, its revenue rose by 56%, and data center revenue surged by 154%, but a closer look reveals the truth. It's all thanks to U.S. companies like Microsoft and Google aggressively clearing inventory and stockpiling chips in advance. But this is a fleeting fix. China's annual 74.1% compute power growth demand is gone, and the global supply chain is like a broken leg. Years ago, when Cisco rejected the Chinese market, Huawei immediately rose to seize 30% of its share. Now, more threads in Cambricon are frantically filling the void left by NVIDIA. Isn't this just leveling up the competition? Trying to create a tech small circle. European and American allies are already looking for an exit. The US dragged Japan and the Netherlands into the controls, forcing Japan to restrict exports of 23 types of equipment, and the Netherlands' ASML lithography machines couldn't be sold, causing its stock price to drop by 20%. Germany, on the other hand, is completely ignoring the situation. BASF continues to supply photoresist to China because they understand that semiconductors are a global collaboration dish. Without China's ingredients, even the most talented chef cannot cook. When the EU imposed a weapons embargo on China decades ago, it lost $200 billion in orders. Who wants to repeat that mistake now? Commentary analysis. The hegemon's big stick. Brandished by the U.S. may appear thunderous, but it is already a spent force. Since the enactment of the CHIPS Act in 2020, the U.S. has attempted to forcibly cut the global semiconductor supply chain into a small yard high fence through a series of unilateral measures like the Export Administration regulations, yet it has forced its allies to swallow the bitter pill. Japanese semiconductor equipment manufacturers Nikon and Tokyo Electron lost over $30 billion in cumulative orders by 2023 due to the export restrictions to China, and were forced to shut down multiple production lines. The delivery volume of Dutch company ASML's EUV lithography machines to China plummeted from 12 units in 2019 to 0 units in 2024, with its CEO Peter Wenning publicly warning that. This self-harming ban is killing the European semiconductor industry. More ironically, China has burst forth with astonishing creativity under the technological blockade. Domestic 28 nanometers immersion lithography machines achieved mass production in 2024, and 14 nanometers process equipment successfully rolled off the line in 2025, with Shanghai Microelectronics signing an order for 100 units with SMIC. Faced with this situation, South Korea's Samsung and SK Hynix are accelerating the expansion of memory chip production lines in China, and TSMC is secretly retaining advanced process capacity at its Nanjing plant. These actions of voting with their feet affirm the basic laws of industrial economics. When 45% of global chip consumption demand is concentrated in China, and when 80% of the global semiconductor supply chain's packaging and testing capacity is rooted in China, any act of severance is tantamount to cutting one's own lifeline. From the 1949 Coordinating Committee for Multilateral Export Controls, COCOM, to the 2023 Chip for Alliance, history has repeatedly proven technological blockade might delay the pace of catching up, but it can never extinguish the spark of innovation. The so-called Technology Iron Curtain Under the shock of globalized supply chain flows, is merely a paper tiger that can be easily pierced, and it will ultimately become a negative case study in the process of economic globalization. Jensen Huang's prophecy is coming true. The Chinese monster is showing its hand. What he feared most was China incubating a competitor, and now it's here. More Threads founder is a former NVIDIA global vice president, and its technical team is full of industry veterans, having just raised $8 billion for R&D. 
Cambricon's first quarter revenue was already $1.1 billion, with big internet companies placing bulk orders. Years ago, the US forced Huawei to develop chips, and Kirin broke through, now forcing the entire industry to develop GPUs. A catch-up to NVIDIA could happen in as little as three years. This is not a prophecy. It is a developing reality. Commentary analysis. History has countless times confirmed that blockade is always a catalyst for innovation. In 2011, the U.S. led the Wolf Amendment to impose a comprehensive technological blockade on China's space program. Chinese aerospace engineers built a technical system from scratch, completing the fully autonomous Tiangong space station in 11 years, whose on-orbit operational parameters far exceed the International Space Station's performance during the same period. After the 2019 chip supply cut crisis, Huawei's Kirin chip team worked day and night in the lab. Achieving a leap from 14 nanometers to 7 nanometers process within two years, and Lungsan technology broke through instruction set architecture limitations, challenging the long term monopoly of x86 and ARM. Now in the GPU sector, faced with export controls on computing equipment, local Chinese manufacturers' shipments have surged by 127% year on year. Financing for companies like Cambricon and Biren Technology has hit new highs and the number of students applying for GPU R&D specializations in university computer science departments has tripled. NVIDIA founder Jensen Huang has long warned, policies that harm China will ultimately backlash against the United States itself. When China forms a full-chain capability in the GPU field, from architectural design to process technology, the $10 trillion market blueprint planned by NVIDIA may well dissipate in the tide of autonomous innovation.